Good morning, friends. So, I finished editing my first video yesterday. Today is, oh, I have my watch on, the 7th of April. It is uploading. I started uploading it at 3 p.m. yesterday. It is 10, 13 a.m. It's at 45%. So in the meantime, we're gonna record another video. A little tidbit of what I learned in that last video. One, I say, um, a lot. Two, I say, so a lot. And three, I say, anyway, a lot. The so and anyway thing, I don't think I'll be able to correct that much, so I'm sorry if it annoys you, but the um thing, I'm going to do my best. And that's all we can ask for, as we like to say in this household. Anyways, what are we doing today? Today I would like to do a quick little wear test on this new Wet n Wild Photo Focus Dewy Foundation. I've seen this on YouTube, so I bought it. And I get that that doesn't seem like a good idea and that YouTube is where I go to spend stupid money, which is true. But we're in a quarantine, a self-quarantine, a stay-at-home order, whatever you want to call it. And I went to Walgreens for like kids medicine and I happened to see this and it's not my fault that I have nothing else better to do with my life than try makeup. But what I would also like to talk about today in regards to the foundation while we do a little try on test and wear test is eczema. And I have, I'm a wicked nerd and I took a lot of notes of things, I highlighted things. So we're gonna discuss eczema and what that really means, what it is, what it does to your skin, how it causes issues, kind of all of the above. Why do my lights keep turning off in the middle of me sitting here? I'm not sure what's happening. But you know what? We're gonna just go with it because if I walk over and turn them back on, they'll turn themselves off in two minutes. So this is what we're doing for the lighting today, as of right now. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna put this foundation on. We're gonna discuss eczema, what it is, how it can be affected by makeup, if this bad boy is going to cause me eczema, if it has anything that makes me flare up. But first, we're gonna start with the Smashbox Primerizer. I'm gonna use my typical primers, my typical products. Everything will be standard for me other than the foundation. And we'll do some check-ins. So like I said, it's 10, 17 now, I am. I guarantee I'll have this makeup on until about 10 o'clock tonight. If not, it'll be pretty close to it. So that's 12 hours. So I'd say that's a, not a bad time. The primerizer on first, <clears throat> then the next Angel Veil, and then we'll discuss the foundation. So what is eczema? I'm gonna refer to my notes. So if I'm looking down or I'm doing things that means I'm not looking at the lens, I'm sorry. I'm trying to refer to my notes so I give you accurate information. One website that I use as my main source of information about eczema is the National Eczema Association. What is eczema? <clears throat> eczema is, like I said in the last video, red, itchy, painful skin. It's typically caused by genes, so genetics, and external triggers. The problem is that they don't really have like a 100% reason as to why people get eczema but they do know those things. So I have a long list of what actually happens to your skin and why eczema forms. And then I also have a huge list of triggers with some really big words that I don't understand. And then some suggestions for you on to how to find products that are National Eczema Association Seal of Acceptance approved. I'll discuss that as well. If you're not somebody who suffers from eczema and you just suffer from dry or sensitive skin, just know that these products are approved for eczema, which means they're definitely approved for dry and sensitive skin. So just keep that in mind, just because you don't have eczema. What is happening with these lights? Like, do you... Right? What is going on? I'm gonna just shut them off. I mean, they're essentially off anyway, so please don't. God, they're just flickering. What is going on? This is so strange. I don't know how to 
gonna make this go away because it's just gonna like mess with the lighting the entire video. Like, do you see what's happening? They just won't shut off. Like I hit the button off and it's still over there flickering. Here, I'm gonna do a little video on my phone so you can kind of see what's happening because the light switch is like wicked cool, but for some reason it's malfunctioning right now. So please hold. Okay, excuse the wicked dirty wall. We've been doing like construction stuff in here. So like fingerprints getting on the white is not that uncommon. It's a flat paint, so just disregard. But this is the wicked cool switch. So off, maybe we'll stay off on it goes all the way on and then you can touch it to dim the lights but today we're having a hard time something's going wrong Look what is happening so we're just going to shut it off and we're going to hope that they stop let's get back oh my god they turned back on on their own i just shut them off and i recorded me shutting them off and I just turned the ring light on all the way and now they're back on. So eczema is caused by an overreactive immune system when triggered by a substance, whether it's external or technically internal, but typically they're external factors. What happens in the body is there's a thing called filigrin. I'm gonna put that on the screen. Or is it this way? I don't know. I'm gonna put that word on the screen so that way you can see what it is. because. Well, let's be honest, I'm not gonna pronounce it right if we're just gonna be honest with ourselves. So filigrin is a protein that helps our bodies maintain a healthy protective barrier on the top layer of the skin. Your top layer of the skin is what is going to keep moisture in. It's also going to keep like bacteria and things out of your skin. So it kind of like, if you think of it like putting a mask on and protecting yourself. What happens with people with eczema is they have a gene mutation that is responsible for creating filigrin on your skin. So you have a lack of that protein. Without having a strong skin barrier, your moisture escapes. So all of the like really nice moisturized skin that oily or normal skin people have just escapes off your skin because there's nothing keeping it in there. And then it also allows bacteria, viruses, and even more things just like not great things into your skin and allows it to enter because nothing is blocking it from coming in like a mask. So there are a lot of triggers. This whole section here triggers and then it even continues on to the next page, which we will discuss. I will discuss my experience with eczema in one second. Now, wet and wild photo focus dewy foundation. It says to shake well. So this is, let's look it up on the old interweb. Is this a joke? You don't just turn on on your own. I literally shut you off. And I have proof in video footage to prove, oh. We're gonna keep going. We're just gonna pretend like that's not happening. All right, let's read the description on Wet n Wild's website of this foundation. It says, the newest innovation to the cult favorite Photo Focus franchise, Dewy Foundation. A weightless, super nourishing foundation that delivers natural all day wear, which we'll test. Silky and creamy covered is easily buildable from medium to full and it easily transitions from day to night, which we'll also test. Ideal for normal to dry skin types, this moisturizing formula blends seamlessly, blurs imperfections, and helps minimize the appearance of pores for a perfectly smooth, dewy finish. Available in 20 cruelty-free, gluten-free, talc-free, and vegan shades. Ultra lightweight moisturizing, delivers buildable coverage, hydrating glow. We'll see. We'll see. So, all Photo Focus Wet n Wild foundations come with like this little spatula. What I'm going to do is I'm just gonna wipe that on the back of my hand and then dot it on my face because that is my preferred method of application for foundation. So we're gonna dot on our face. Also note how much better my skin looks today compared to the last video when I slept in my makeup and I looked horrendous. That also has to do with my eczema though. Definitely smells very paintish. I remember a lot of people saying that on YouTube and I didn't quite know what they were talking about, but I get it now. 
Anyways, my skin being so red was definitely partially to do with eczema because I have to moisturize my skin day and night, twice a day with a very particular moisturizer that is not a face moisturizer, but is an approved eczema moisturizer. Once again, we'll get into that and I can actually tell you the exact moisturizer I use just for reference. So I have the foundation on the beauty blender, have our skin and here we go. When it comes to eczema and the triggers and what all that means is essentially there are materials. So there are actual materials like fabrics that can cause you to get eczema flare-ups from irritating your skin. There are chemicals like chemical compounds found in a lot of um, cleaning products, soaps, shampoos, makeup, moisturizers, cleansers, those kind of things that can cause it. And then there's also just like like life. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but eczema can be triggered by stress. So if you are incredibly stressed, you can get an eczema flare up. Uh, you can be triggered by hormones. So I just put a little bit more on the back of my hand to put on my neck. Cause although in the camera, this actually doesn't look like it's that off of a shade for me. It's pretty nice. I was a guess. Anyways, hormones. So especially for women, like around their time of the month, when hormones go up and down and change and shift, it will cause eczema flare-ups. It can be caused by allergens. And then like I mentioned before, simply just your genetic makeup. Like yes, it's a mutation, but it's very common that if you have eczema that it will be passed down. For example, my daughter also has eczema. All right, let's do a little zoom in. So this is the skin, let me get a little closer. This is our skin with the foundation on my forehead, which is my wicked problem zone. It's got the nose. Doesn't look too bad. So we're gonna finish putting on the rest of our makeup while we talk about eczema. We're back to our notes because I have all the like technical terms on here in regards to triggers that I don't know off the top of my head. And let's get into it. So like I said, stress can control it or cause a flare up. Climate and sweating. So if you sweat a lot, it can actually cause a flare up. Too cold of temperatures, um, extreme humidity versus lack of humidity can cause a flare up essentially any extreme temperatures and I live in New Hampshire. Okay. So first of all, there's like three months of a year or even more sometimes where my skin is just horrendous. And I do definitely notice that my skin gets worse in the winter, obviously, because it's way drier. The air is not any sort of moisture in it. It's just very dry and it just makes my skin really bad. Uh, and then Infections, you can actually get infections on your skin. Oh, yucky. I'm not really gonna go into that though because I know nothing about that, but that can cause eczema flare-ups. There's also allergens like I mentioned and I will go into what those things are and then hormones. As I mentioned a minute ago, the allergens, like if you have a typical allergy to, you know, seasonal allergies like pollen, there's dust mites, there's pet danders like dog and cat hair, which I've learned I'm also allergic to now that I live with a dog and a cat full time again. And then mold and dandruff can cause eczema flare-ups. And then I will get into the other triggers in one second once we get our concealer going. So once again, using the Becca Brightening Under Eye Corrector in light to medium. I'm gonna take some on my finger and I'm just going to tap it into my darkest areas of my eye. So as I mentioned, triggers, there can be like fabric triggers. So for example, wool, like a sweater. You shouldn't wear sweaters because it can cause eczema flare-ups. It also can be caused by polyester, which is a very common fabric that is used in a lot of clothing. Uh, I believe because it's cheap, these lights, 
so it allows I don't know don't fact check me on that but I believe it's cheap so that's why people use it and then there's metals like nickel I don't know like how you'd be getting nickel maybe I'm like can you get nickel in water I should have probably looked that up but nickel can cause flare-ups cigarette smoke soaps fragrances antibacterial ointments formaldehydes which is a voc or a volatile organic compound it is found in our natural environment a lot like in paints it's also found like that new car smell is actually formaldehyde or a voc it's not a great thing to inhale and it's actually really bad for you and a cancer causing chemical but that's beside the point that's like an environmental interior design nerdy thing that i know but in regards to actual eczema related items it has to do with like household disinfectants some vaccines actually have formaldehyde in it which is pretty scary to learn about um, it's also in glue and adhesives so i'm wondering if like lash glue has formaldehyde in it i don't wear a ton of lashes but when i do i wonder if that would be a problem and then there's also a lot of huge words that i don't know how to say and i'll also put them on the screen because you're gonna need to bear with me as i try to pronounce this Isothiazolinones. How do you? They are found in personal care products like baby wipes, and I also have a large list on the next page about all of the things that it is in. And then the other huge word that I don't know what to, how to say is cocamidopropylbetaine. Once again. I'll put it on the screen if you want to look it up, if you want to correct me, go ahead. I have no idea what I'm saying and I have no idea what I'm doing. Putting Maybelline Fit Me Concealer on my under eyes, around my nose. I'm not going to touch up my cheeks because I feel like that's part of the wear test. On the bridge of our nose, right here. I also have a pimple right there, that's why I went to that particular location and then on our forehead which although I'm doing but as I'm doing this I don't know if you can see the foundation's already sinking into my forehead lines like real bad I know I haven't set my foundation yet but I can guarantee that this foundation will do that and if it doesn't that will be a huge win and a huge surprise because as I mentioned in the last video everything sinks into my forehead lines and then the chin and we're just gonna cover up some of these pimples let's get into this so the iso blip 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 word that i can barely say is a preservative that is found in thousands of cosmetic skincare products which is pretty aggressive when you think to how to again with that. So cosmetic skincare products, I mean, people use skincare to like make themselves look better. And in actuality, it can cause a lot of problems for people with eczema, especially obviously on their face. And also like body moisturizers and things like that as well. So here's just a list of some things that contain the ISO do 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 things I can't say. Dishwashing liquids or soaps. Shampoos. 53% of shampoos on the market contain this. I found that pretty dramatic because I don't pay attention to what's my shampoo in regards to like washing my body and how that can affect the eczema on my arms, but good to know. Cleaners, like household cleaners, conditioners, hair dyes, laundry softeners, and detergents. Soaps and cleansers, moisturizers, shaving products, sunscreens, anti-aging, which is a big deal for the makeup industry, and hair styling products all have these preservatives in them. When I said anti-aging, the reason that became a problem for me was because I tried, or like when I first got into makeup, Kathleen Lights was at that time talking about the It Cosmetics Naturally Pretty palette. So that was my first big eyeshadow palette purchase. But as most people know, or if you don't, you're gonna find out right now, It Cosmetics, the company, puts anti-aging products in almost every single one of their products. And because of that, I used the eyeshadow palette and I ended up getting eczema all over my eyelids. And at the time, I wasn't aware that anti-aging was causing eczema 
as a result, I cannot use it cosmetics. It literally created eczema patches all over my eyelids. My eyes were swollen, they were itchy, they were flaking. It was awful. It was probably one of the worst eczema outbreaks I can remember just because it was so unexpected and the eyelids are just such a delicate area on your face that the pain and the itchiness being on your eye is a terrible feeling. So the other thing in that list of technical terms that I don't know was the coca ba -ba 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 betaine nonsense that I can't pronounce also, which will also be on the screen every time I mention it. That is derived from coconut oil and here comes another big word, dimethylaminopropylamine. You're welcome. Good thing I talk about these things that are so scientific and I cannot for the life of me understand how to say them. You're welcome. You're welcome. So that dimethyl blah, 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 not dimethicone, which is found in a lot of like, um, it's like a silicone based chemical. Not that. Dimethyl, you know, and coconut oil. Um, the reason that that is included is because it allows water to mix with oil and dirt so it can be rinsed away. That chemical compound is used to thicken shampoos and lotions. So if you think of like a lotion that is really thick, like you would think super moisturizing, not necessarily a good thing for eczema because that thickening agent is that product that causes irritation and inflammation in the skin, which then causes eczema flare-ups. Uh, some things that I've noticed that cause my skin to have issues, and this is based off of my dermatologist and this was also on that nationaleczema.org website, which I will link and you can go, you know, read all the same information that I did. So right now, you can see that we are sinking into my lines on my forehead. I'm going to tap it out and then set it and hope that that stops. But as mentioned before, I'm not totally optimistic about that. Anyway, so some triggers of mine that I've found like I said, anti-aging definitely happens. Also, when I went to the dermatologist, they told me to keep my household temperature at 70 degrees or above, always. Now, Sean hates that because he wants his house at 62. Can you tell me in what world in the middle of winter you want your home at 62 degrees? Not even winter, it's spring. It's only like 55 outside when the house is 62. Every time he leaves, I turn it up. So anyways, 70 degrees, that way the, it's not too cold because then my skin will dry out and it will not retain any moisture. And also if water is too hot. So like most women, I love taking like horrendously burning your skin off, make you want to burst into flames, hot showers. Problem with that is it dries out your skin and it causes immense amounts of eczema. So I do it anyways, but that hurts. Also sweaters definitely cause me pain. I've also found, this is why I was wondering about nickel and water. When I was in college, uh, my eczema was significantly worse and I was wondering if the water showering there was worse somehow, like there was something in it that was causing my eczema flare ups. Cause there was one point in time where I had my entire arm up around my chest and down the other arm, just eczema everywhere. Incredibly painful. Not something I would want to do again, that's for sure. And then just some things that I've used in the past to make my eczema better. One thing that I have found, and some sites will say that this isn't good, but I have found that it works very well for me is if I have an eczema flare up and same with my daughter, if I get out of the shower, cause I shower at night, I lotion. So I lotion twice a day using a Curel advanced therapy. It's like the Curel red bottle. I'll try to stick a picture up here and then link it if I can. I just don't know how to do that picture thing. So if it doesn't show up, just know that editing Caitlin wasn't able to do it. And I'm so sorry. Same with the words. She's going to do her best, but like there's no guarantee. I'm still working on trying to figure out how to edit, so bear with me. So that Curel lotion, I put it on as soon as I get out of the shower. All the places that I typically have eczema problems. So my face, I get a full pump and then I take another full pump and put it on my arms. 
and then whatever is left over on my chest. And then if I have a bad eczema spot, for example, this will be a good test for this foundation wear test in regards to my eczema, is I have a little spot on my face that I just circled for you that is a nice flaky eczema flare up spot and I have, I've done really well with it. It's gotten a lot better in the last couple days because I've been really paying attention to it. But after I finish putting the lotion on, I take a little bit of Vaseline or petroleum jelly and I put it on the spot. The reason Vaseline works is because it acts like a barrier. So your skin barrier is gone, but the Vaseline is a barrier. So it locks in whatever's under it. The problem is, and why I believe some people say that it doesn't work for eczema is because it's not adding moisture, it's locking in what's ever underneath. So if you don't moisturize your skin first, sorry, I forgot to even set like the rest of my face. If you don't moisturize your skin first and then you just put this Vaseline on top, it's not gonna work because there's no, no moisture to lock in. You need to lock in the actual moisture or else what's the point? You're just locking in dryness. So if you moisturize first and then you put Vaseline on top, it creates the barrier that your skin is lacking and allows the moisture to stay on top of your skin and then absorb into the dry patches. Have I 100% researched that? And I can tell you that that is a scientific explanation. No, but I can tell you that from experience, that is what I found works. And also from reading about why petroleum jelly doesn't work for eczema, that's my scientific reason as to why moisturizing first and then putting Vaseline on is actually going to work. The other thing that you can get through a dermatologist, which my daughter has, and I've had in the past, but I don't have right now, is you can get a topical ointment for flare-ups. So a dermatologist will prescribe you a prescription and it will just be some sort of topical ointment that will moisturize, like deeply moisturize, and essentially fix or eliminate the eczema flare-up within a couple days. It's not like an instant relief. It's not an immediate reaction. It'll take 24 hours. It'll take 48 hours. I don't know, I'm not a scientist. Topical ointments you obviously have to get over the counter or from a pharmacist and all that So when it comes to products on your day-to-day -day that can prevent flare from happening, so you don't even need the topical ointments the reason the national eczema.org is so Vital and something I have used actually for years and I suggest to anyone who asks about eczema is to go visit this website because it will give you a directory of products that have a seal of approval from the National Eczema Association. And what that is, is it's essentially just like a way to notate that it is safe for eczema, it's safe for sensitive, it's safe for dry. It doesn't contain any, or not any, but most of the things that can cause flare-ups. I'm gonna try to do this a lot softer today given how aggressive it looked last time on camera. Uh, but it doesn't have any of the like um, irritating chemical compounds or any of the you know fragrances or any of those things that would cause your eczema to flare up and then it gets a seal of approval and it gets a star rating so I'm pretty sure there's a few products that have five stars but most of them are four because it's pretty hard to formulate products without some of these things at this point but if you go on there, you can search like Cetaphil. That brand is very well known. So like the Cetaphil Gentle Skin Cleanser. I search that on there. It either tells me, which is what I use to remove my makeup. It tells me if it's good. It tells me if it's bad. What about it? What it does contain, what it doesn't contain. And it allows me to determine if it's something that I should use. For example, I was looking for an eye cream because I don't have one and I would like to try it since my under eyes are so dry. I think it would really benefit to use some sort of eye cream. So I was looking up on there what well, eye creams are NEA seal of acceptance approved and what the rating would be for those products. So that is something that I really think is really beneficial and one of the most important things about this whole National Eczema Association website is that they have that. They also have like a bunch of information on research and how to donate to the association and all that on their website, but that's obviously not something I'm like super in touch with other than just discussing like the basic facts with you today. 
and just what eczema can do. So in regards to all those compounds I was discussing, I did peel back. So on the back of the foundation bottle, you can peel up the corner. And these are your ingredients. They'll also be listed on the website, I assume. Let's see. Yes, they do have ingredients listed on the Wet n Wild website. So they do have that. Reading it, none of the things that I said to you, those words that I can't pronounce that were on the screen a hundred times, are on there, but I should do some more research to find out if there's other names for them. You know how like sugar, they'll disguise it as like a different name on ingredient list, so you're not reading like artificial sugar. I should have done more research to determine that, but I just read this before I turned the camera on and that was about it. So we'll see how this does. We'll see if it causes my skin to look really red and irritated tomorrow. But as of right now, now that, you know, I set my forehead, which I'm tapping out again, it's not bad. I put my concealer on, I put my powder on, I put my bronzer on. That's all I'm gonna do because of the next video or the video that it's already up that I will also link below that video. Uh, I will give you a little zoom in real quick here so you can see my skin. So here we are with the foundation on. So actually while I'm here, excuse me, I'm just moving my mirror out of the way. This right here is my eczema patch, which it's not that bad right now, but you can see the dryness. See more of like the irritation and the inflammation here. Just what that looks like. And then my forehead, which is my problem zone. It's not sinking in too bad yet, but when I start doing my like eyeshadow and all of that, it'll definitely get worse because I lift my eyebrows a lot more when I do that. Also, when I apply mascara, I do that a lot too. So that is the foundation so far. I'm gonna cut the video here so I can work on the eyes. I'll be right back with an update. For you, it'll be two seconds. For me, it'll be probably 30 to 45 minutes from now, but either way, also, just for reference, right now it is 10.58 in the morning. So it's almost 11 o'clock when I fully finish this and we'll give you time stamps when I check in again. So see you soon. Finished the eyeshadow, which took me a lot longer than I expected it to. My last check-in was at 10.58. It's 12.12. .12. problem. It shouldn't take that long to do eyeshadow, but came out fun. If you want to see how I did this and everything involved with picking the colors, go check out that video. It'll be linked down below since it did go up first because this would have been a big spoiler. But as far as the foundation goes, it has now been on for like an hour and a half since it was on before I obviously finished setting. If I'm going to be honest with you, I think it doesn't react well with my concealer because it's really broken up under this eye already. Like it's only been an hour and a half and this eye looks pretty rough. Also my forehead lines very visibly have foundation in them and it's only been an hour and a half. So I feel like that's not a good thing. I wear makeup for about 12 hours a day typically when I'm working because I have to get up so early to then get my daughter to school and you know, all those things. So 12 hours is like a standard makeup day for me and it doesn't look that great. Uh, my nose looks fine, which is atypical. Why well, I have so much blue glitter on my face. My smile lines are a little sunken in. It doesn't really look broken up anywhere else. And then I'm just gonna show you this eczema spot on my face because it has gotten worse in the time. I think the having makeup on it is just gonna dry it out even more as we go, so you'll get a good update here. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, but under my eye right here is really broken up. Yeah, you can like see the darkness poking through. Um, my nose looks okay. The eczema right here, you can see it all just like flaking its life away. But that's pretty standard. Um, and then my forehead lines, look at all that foundation creeping in there. Like 
aggressively and my l'oreal infallible pro glow doesn't do that at all and that's why i wear that foundation all the time so this one definitely isn't my favorite when it comes to these bad boys so that's my update for now it's not a bad foundation i think if i mixed it with my pro glow or put my pro glow on my forehead i might like it better and then like blatantly ignore the under eyes because something is not reacting well down here and I used everything else that was pretty typical for my routine. So on that note, that is going to be the end of this check-in. See you soon. Hi. So it's currently only 1.30, so it's not that big of a time change between my last check-in, but I realized I never gave you a natural light look. So I'm standing in front of a window. Also, I just went outside and planted my little succulents and they're so stinking cute. And I got my septum jewelry in the mail. Okay. <clears throat> Please disregard. So first of all, my eyes look wicked green today, but we're just gonna look at the, I was outside for a little bit, so oils should be peeking through. I mean, you get like a hint. You can see my eczema. You get the under eye area that looks really creepy. Yeah, see, it's just not, it's not wearing poorly and it doesn't look bad. Like, I know it's supposed to be like a photo. You're getting a real sneak peek into the crazy chaos mess that's behind me. Also, look at that plant. Tell me that's not the most beautiful pothos you've ever seen in your entire life. Just look at it cascading to the floor. Oh, God. I love it. So it's not like it doesn't look good. Like, it's definitely a really good photo video kind of thing like I look really nice in the camera but it's just not my favorite you know like it just looks like it's on top of my skin obviously my eczema looks bad I don't know it's not bad it just definitely doesn't get along with my favorite concealer definitely f sinks into my fine lines on my forehead which is the one area that's hardest for all if most if not all foundations to kind of figure out but overall, I don't think it looks that bad. It's a little dewy. It's definitely not like extreme, especially being outside for a little while. But this is my all natural light check-in. Hello, again, check-in number ow, three, I believe. It is now 3.46 on the dot. And so this foundation's been on for about five hours. Let's take a gander. So here's the eczema again. You can see the flakes pretty prominently. But so let me say, I haven't really said this yet, but no matter what, foundation's not going to look good on eczema breakouts. So I'm not knocking the foundation for looking bad. I'm just saying that it's not doing anything to hydrate it. So like, it's a dewy foundation and I've been wearing it for five hours. So you would think my natural oils would be peeking through here. However, it's just not looking great on my eczema patch. So yeah, you can just see like the skin flakes coming off. Um, as for the rest of my skin, it's sinking into my fine lines on my smile lines a little bit. Looks like my forehead is still pretty much the same. Sorry, let me look in this mirror. Yeah, pretty much the same. Still sinking in slightly, but not that bad. Under my eyes and around my nose. Yeah, it's just this one spot under my eye that looks like pretty weird. Could just be super dry, I guess, now that I think about it. Um my like bronzer and blush is staying on pretty good my eyeshadow is staying on pretty good but that doesn't really have to do with the foundation i don't know five hours it looks pretty good it claims it'd be what like 24 hours or something crazy no i don't know i don't remember what the website said but i said it in the video so that's where we're at at hour five i'm gonna go drive to go get my daughter from daycare I'm gonna get home and cook tacos because I'm filming this on a Tuesday, so it's Taco Tuesday. So 
that's the plan right now. And then I'll hopefully check in around like six, maybe if I can, as long as the cutie pie isn't all up on my stuff to need attention and whatever, then I'll be able to do another quick video update. If not, I'll see you after she goes to bed at like 8, 8, 39, you know, we'll check in. You'll find out. Give you literally two seconds and you'll know. So, see you in a bit. Wish me luck. Bye. Hi. So, I didn't get the next update in. So, it is currently 8.04. You see that? 8.04 p.m. So, let's take a gander at the foundation. So... Let me get my mirror so I can get a look. I actually haven't even looked at it yet. So it's definitely sunk into my lines. My bronzer is still mainly there, but I feel like it's really worn away. Go on my chin and over these pimples. They weren't definitely weren't nearly as red before. They're definitely peeking through. Ow. Around my nose. It hates the ring light. Um, around my nose is definitely worn off. This area seems like it's not doing so good, but put on it like, what, 11? So we're at 8.30, no, 8.05. That's what, nine hours, that's a long time. So like for me who wears it for 12 hours, it's not quite enough, but I mean, nine hours is pretty impressive, so. Not looking awful. I feel like the bronzer is very much gone on my forehead. On my cheeks, well, that one's not really as much, but this one stayed really well. These lights are just flickering back. I the lighting in this video is gonna be awful, and I'm sorry. I did my best. But that is the update for eight o'clock. I might update again. I'll probably update again right before I take my makeup off in the bathroom. So here's the thing, my last update, if you will, uh, I was in the middle of recording and my phone just, <clears throat> excuse me, my phone just completely died. So you didn't get my like 10, 12 hour, whatever update of the foundation. Let's just say it looked the same. Today is uh, April 21st been a hot minute since I recorded that video and it is currently 1254 p.m. and I put this foundation on at about nine and I'm wearing the same one the wet and wild dewy so I mean it's been three hours essentially what I want to say is it's a fine foundation it's not my favorite but it's fine it's decent I'd wear it I just can't wear it to like work because it's not a 12 hour wear kind of thing it does sink into my fine lines on my forehead a little bit. Not in love with that because that is one thing that I need when I am wearing foundation. Also, disregard what's happening here. I'm having a great day. This is the uh, Maybelline, Maybelline, Maybelline Superstay Ink Crayon in like some bright pink color and I'll put it in the description box just for your reference because I obviously wasn't wearing this that day. Um, and then also here's a little sneak peek of the cutie pie bathroom. Some paintings I made, the wonderful color. I'm not sure what's happening behind here and why it's closed, so we'll just get a peek. Okay, it's not bad. So, whenever I do that bathroom tour, you'll be able to see the full kit and caboodle. But this is my ending to my video. I would like to say thank you for watching and listening to me rant about eczema, my favorite topic and watching me try this foundation. I also would like to say, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, and follow my Instagram, which is the same as my YouTube channel, Caitlin Jolene underscore makeup. And on that note, I'm gonna go. Love you all so much, see you next time. Mm -hmm.